Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, I wanna show you how to self-host a password manager called Vault Warden in Casa OS. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the global brand for men's hygiene and grooming products. Just because guys in the tech industry are often thought to be gross basement dwelling neckbeards doesn't mean that our basement dwellers need to be gross neckbeards. This is the Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts from the most sensitive regions of the body. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower and that's super convenient and makes for easy cleanup too. This lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart charging system with a wireless charging dock and these little LED lights on the front show you how much juice you have. You can tap the button on the front three times and it will enable or disable travel lock, which is super, super convenient to make sure that your trimmer doesn't come on while it's in your bag. Also included in the Perfect Package 4.0 kit are two products that I never knew I needed until now the Crop Preserver Bowl Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Bowl Toner Spray. For a limited time, you can get all of this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping when you use coupon code DBTECH at checkout. So as I mentioned in this video, I wanna show you how to uh, self-host a password manager called Vault Warden. It used to be Bitwarden RS, um, but then they kind of separated themselves from uh, from the original. Anyway, all of that story out of the way, I've been hosting uh, my own password manager, uh, let's call it Vault Warden for the sake of this video. Um, and, and I had my wife using uh, LastPass and I was using LastPass and I decided to try Vault Warden and uh, even convinced her to try Vault Warden and she actually prefers the free self-hosted version of a password manager more than the paid version of a corporate password manager. Uh, something to keep in mind with this is there are some prerequisites to this. Uh, and that is that you'll want to have watched my previous video about how to set up Nginx Proxy Manager using uh, Casa OS as well because uh, Vault Warden or Bitwarden, whatever, uh, requires an SSL in order to work. So, um, with that said, uh, if you haven't seen the Nginx Proxy Manager video, go watch that, then come back and watch this. But uh, if you've already seen that, uh, hopefully you have, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop where we'll take a look at the process of getting Vault Warden set up on Casa OS. So here we are on my Casa OS dashboard. We've got some applications already in here, including Bookstack, uh, Bookstack Database, Nginx Proxy Manager, as I mentioned before, as well as AdGuard Home. So in order to get uh, Vault Warden set up and running, what we're gonna do first is actually click up here where it says App Store. And then we're going to do a custom install, which will be right there. And then uh, basically at this point, we're just going to fill in the blanks. Now, if you don't wanna fill in the blanks and you just wanna import this, head over to Patreon, become a patron, and you can download the uh, project files for this video if you'd prefer to do it that way instead. So uh, let's go ahead and get all of this filled in here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do uh, is fill in the image that we're going to use for this setup. Uh, that Docker image in this case is Vault Warden slash server with the tag of latest. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, our app name, of course, uh, we're gonna call this uh, Vault uh, War, oops, War Den. Get my mouse out of the way there. Um, so if we wanted to, we could replace this. I'm not actually sure what this looks like. Let's, well, let's just find out. Um, uh, interesting, okay, so. If you'd like uh, Vault Warden or Bitwarden to show up, uh, you could absolutely put in a, an icon URL right there. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but you absolutely could. The next thing that I wanna do is decide what port I want the dashboard for Vault Warden to be on. Uh, by default, the, uh, the Docker Compose uh, file for this puts it on port 80. However, uh, we've got port 80 set aside for Nginx Proxy Manager. So what I'm gonna do instead is just call this port 8888 like so. You can basically pick whichever port you'd like as long as that port isn't in use by another application. So um, below that, we've got our network bridge is just fine in this case. Um, our ports, uh, because we put this on port 8888, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And then for our containers port, we're gonna put port 80 uh, right there. That's the port that they've designated inside the uh, container uh, to, to be the access port. So pretty standard there. Uh, TCP for the protocol is just fine. For volumes, we only got one volume for this. And uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I like to put things at home slash Docker and then in whatever uh, the application name would be. So I'm just gonna put a uh, vault 
uh, warden here. And then for the inside of the container, uh, we're just gonna do a slash data. Uh, that is as per the Docker Compose file uh, that, that they've got over on their hyperdocker.com page, uh, which you can, of course, go check out. I will have a link to that in the description if you'd like to check that out for yourself. Um, beyond that, there are no uh, environmental variables for this one. We don't need to add any devices. Our CPU shares, our restart policy, all of this is fine. You can adjust those if you'd like to. Um, for what we're doing here, I don't see a need to do that though. So uh, what we're gonna do next is click on install. And now it's gonna go through the process of pulling everything, extracting, downloading, the whole process. It'll go through this and then once this is done, the page will reload and we should see uh, an icon that we can click to go over to our dashboard. A few moments later. So here we go, Vault Warden is up and running and if I, if I, uh, if I click this, uh, it should take me over to here. And so by default, uh, there is no default username and password. I love this about Vault Warden. Uh, they, they don't want there to be a, a master account here. Uh, this is just a password manager. So uh, what we're gonna do, um, I, I'll just show you this. I'm going to create an account um, and then we're gonna put in, and then we'll put in uh, my name and then, and then we'll click submit. Now, right up here at the top, we're gonna see this browser requires HTTPS to use the uh, web vault. Uh, check the Vault Warden Wiki for details on how to enable that. So uh, basically, that, that's what I meant. You need to have an HTTPS, an SSL setup. So what we're going to do next is actually jump over to Cloudflare, where we're going to set up a domain name, or in this case, a subdomain uh, for this, so that we can then uh, go into Nginx Proxy Manager and set up a subdomain for this on our local network here. So uh, what we'll do, like I said, is we're going to come over here to uh, Cloudflare. Um, now, if you watched my previous video, again, with Nginx Proxy Manager, um, I used a different uh, URL and I had to use that URL for something else. So I've set up a different URL for, uh, for the, the Casa OS dashboard with Nginx Proxy Manager and all of that. So uh, I've already generated all of my SSLs as I showed in that video as well. So basically at this point, all I need to do is set up my subdomain for this. I'm gonna use a CNAME to do that. So what I'll do next is actually click on add record. Uh, again, I'm gonna change this to a CNAME. And for this, uh, I'm just going to do um, VW for Vault Warden. You can make this subdomain, whatever you'd like it to be. Um, try to be creative with it. I wouldn't necessarily make it, you know, password.mydomain.com or, um, or, or whatever. I would, I would, with this one having basically all of your stored passwords on it, I would make this one very, very difficult to find. So uh, I'm just gonna do VW, but you should, you should probably put some more thought into it than that. Uh, next, I'm going to do at, oops, I'm just gonna put the at symbol right there. And here we can see that it will be vw.dbtech.link for the domain name. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, oops, like so, and click copy. And then I'm going to click save. So basically at this point, we're done with Cloudflare. We don't need to do anything else. Uh, so what we can do next is jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, we're going to add a proxy host. And our, our domain name, I'm just gonna paste that in there as vw.dbtech.link. Once you've typed that in there or pasted that in there or whatever, press enter. Uh, if you click out of it, it will just go away. It's a weird thing they do, but that's how it is. Uh, so the, H, uh, the scheme can be left as HTTP. Uh, if it had a built-in SSL, um, you could switch that to HTTPS. However, we don't have that. Uh, that's why we're going through this process. So what I'm gonna do is type in the IP address of our CASA OS server. So 192.168.1.130. Again, that's mine. Yours will probably be different. Um, and then for the forward port, I, uh, we set it up on 8888, like so. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cache assets, uh, block common exploit. Um, and WebSocket support can be available. Uh, for our SSL, I'm gonna come back to something, but for our SSL, uh, we're going to select our uh, relevant uh, SSL for that, and then we're going to check all of these boxes. Uh, if you're not sure about HSTS, uh, you can enable that in Cloudflare. It's just a couple of clicks, um, and it just it forces HTTPS to be required. Uh, it's just an extra step for that. Um, if we come back over to here, uh, this access list uh, where this says publicly available. Now, if you want this to be accessible from literally anywhere in the world, you can leave this as publicly available and then uh, you can just go to any computer and type in, in this case, vw.dbtech.link and uh, access your, your password manager from there. If you want it to be more restrictive, uh, you could 
uh, set up different access lists where you might have to enter a username and password to even get to the login screen. Uh, and that first username and password would be handled by uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, you could also make it uh, so that you would have to be logged in via a certain IP address. Uh, in that case, you'd want a VPN set up uh, in order for that to work. Uh, you, and what I mean by that is you want a VPN on your local network that you would VPN into to get a home IP address to then be able to access this. There's a couple of different ways you can go about doing that. Um, but that's those are those are kind of outside the scope of this video. Just know that uh, you can uh, secure this a bit more by adding uh, access lists to this. So um, right now we're just going to leave this as publicly accessible, and I'm going to click save. And, and now if I click this, uh, so now we're brought to this page, and I can click on uh, create an account, um, and I can uh, put in my email address. And then I'll click Submit. So now, uh, like it says up here in the top right-hand corner, uh, your account has been created. You can now log in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I'm going to close this. So now we have our, our Vault Warden set up and ready to go. So now that we've got Vault Warden set up and ready to go, uh, we may want to add this to our browser, whether it's on our laptop or our desktop or, or, or wherever. Um, so what you can do, or even on your phone for that matter, I've got uh, Bitwarden installed on my Android device, works great there as well. Uh, what we're gonna do is come up here to our browser. We're gonna click on the little icon. Uh, you can just go to the, the, the Chrome App Store and look for Bitwarden and install the Bitwarden app. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Oops, like so. Come on, there we go. The first thing we want to do is click on settings um, and then go to our self-hosted environment, a server URL right here. We're going to type in HTTPS and then VW, oops, VW.dbtech.link. And then we can just click save right here. And then we can log in using our username and password. Uh, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my password here. And there we go. So as we can see, there's nothing in here. Uh, however, this is how you can add uh, the browser extension to your server so that you can access all of your stuff via the browser extension and just simplify your life a little bit more. The, the, the process is very, very similar uh, if you're putting this on, on a cell phone or a tablet or whatever. Uh, just add the application um, on, on, your, on your mobile device or in this case, the browser extension. Make sure to change the environmental variable for or the server URL uh, to fit your server's URL uh, and then just log in and you're good to go. Um, so it's very, very simple that way. Uh, something else that I would encourage is going over here to settings um, and then go over here to two-step login. And at this point, you can then uh, set up an authenticator app, whether you use the Google Authenticator or Authy. Uh, you can set up a Yubico key, which I, I highly encourage. I don't have mine on me, but uh, you can also set up Yubico keys, uh, Google or Authenticator apps to get the six digits, uh, whatever. I highly encourage that you do this uh, because um, it, it just, it's an, it, it, well, it's, it's a two-factor authentication method that adds an additional layer of authentication to prove that you are you or help prove that you are you and, and keep, uh, keep the bad guys out. Um, there are other things in here that you can do uh, with setting up uh, domain rules um, where they've got a bunch of stuff in here already. Uh, I appreciate that they've gone to the extent that they have here. Uh, emergency access, uh, you can add emergency contacts in case something happens that then somebody else can get access to your account if you want them to do that. Uh, so so I, I dig that. Uh, organizations, you can have multiple organizations in here if you want to share this uh, with multiple people or maybe you've got, you know, maybe you've got a, a company with, you know, um, a development organization and a design organization and an accounting organization. You can set up all of those different organizations within there to, to help uh, share items with other users within that organization. Uh, let's see, we've got options here, uh, vault timeout. Um, you, you've got options here on how you want uh, things to be handled. Of course, the thing I like to do here is click on, oops, Click on dark and click save. So, so, so much better that way, in my opinion. Um, and then, of course, you've got my account uh, where you can, you know, set up uh, all kinds of different stuff here. You can change your password. You can change your email. You can uh, change your encryption key settings, uh, all kinds of different stuff in here that you can change to fit your security needs uh, more effectively. So that's really all there is to setting up 
uh, Vault Warden in Docker on Casa OS so that you can have remote access to a password manager and quit paying for or quit having a bad experience with a corporate owned password manager like we've all used in the past. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really does help me out quite a bit. Uh, also, be sure to check out Casa OS's Discord. I'll link that in the description as well. All of the links to everything you'll need will be available in the description in some capacity. Uh, also, if you would like to just download uh, the import file for this, head over to Patreon, where you can download the JSON file and uh, just import it and be done. Uh, of course, you'll still have to go through the process of setting up your domain, your Nginx proxy manager, that sort of thing. But uh, if you just want to deploy this container very, very easily uh, with an import file, head over to Patreon, get uh, set up there, and then you can download those files. But I think with all of that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.